Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education, Continuing Medical Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. Episode 1, I Can't Hear You, Hearing Loss in the Field. At the end of this episode, you should appreciate the epidemiology of hearing loss, learn how to recognize hearing loss, and learn strategies to work with hearing loss in the field. Hearing loss is probably the most common condition that we deal with in an older uh, population, and there's a variety of reasons for it. Uh, often, hearing loss results just from a lifelong exposure to noise and, and uh, causing some damage over a period of time, but certainly, um, to some degree, we all experience some degree of hearing loss as we get older. I think you see hearing loss on a, on a pretty frequent basis, um, particularly given the, the aging population that we serve. Uh, there's a lot more individuals um, with, uh, with hearing loss that's developed over time. The other fact of the matter is that we have a very, very large hearing impaired population with, with RIT being nearby and, and some of the other facilities being here. So indeed, it's, it's I'd say, pretty much, much more prevalent in this region than it is in, in probably similar cities um, throughout upstate New York or, or the U.S. A, a patient with hearing loss may simply indicate to you that they, they're having a difficult time hearing. Uh, but some other indications for those that, that may not clearly communicate that uh, is uh, changing their position to be able to, to hear better, so they may be leaning forward, they may be um, uh, more intent on, on lip reading as well, and many patients with hearing loss will uh, supplement their communication by uh, reading lips as well. Uh, so that's, that clearly argues for trying to have to achieve some better lighting uh, so the patient can see your face and uh, be able to follow some of that um, communication that's, that's taking place. Uh, the other issue to think about is just a simply uh, a quick look around to see if there's a presence of hearing aids um, or if a patient is wearing a hearing aid uh, to make sure that's turned on and that's appropriately adjusted so that they uh, uh, can take advantage of that for any communication. Uh, and oftentimes you may gain additional information from the family or caregivers that are present that may indicate to you that there, there could be some uh, hearing loss or they have a difficult time hearing. Ways to recognize hearing loss. The patient may inform you. They may change their position to improve the sound. You should look for hearing aids and ask caregivers about the patient's hearing abilities. Well, I think, I think all providers have learned ways to, um, to, to better their ability to communicate with, with hearing impaired individuals. Um, obviously one, one of the first things that many do is simply raise their voice and that's not always the best thing to do because, uh, for example, um, once you start doing that sometimes the, the phonetics and, and how you're able to articulate yourself, particularly for those that can read lips, um, become somewhat distorted. Uh, so little things like making sure that you're facing the person, uh, somehow grabbing their attention so that they can look at you, uh, because lip reading is, is very effective for large numbers of both old, uh, older individuals that have acquired hearing loss or individuals that have uh, uh, hearing loss at, at much younger ages. Um, obviously what we do as well is, is simply speak closer to them, uh, speak closer to their ear, um, to also sometimes use uh, gestations with, with hands um, or, uh, or motions. Um, obviously some of us will also write things down if that's, uh, if that's the best way to communicate with them um, in terms of asking some of those simple questions. I think the key for EMS personnel is that uh, you always need to speak to the patient first. Uh, don't assume that a patient who's older uh, is automatically has hearing loss and can't uh, can't necessarily communicate or has underlying dementia and can't process, uh, you need to make an effort to communicate to the patient first and include them in the discussions, even if you're talking then to subsequent caregivers or, or family that are present. Uh, the other thing is to, uh, to attempt to speak in, in a uh, clear voice, but avoid shouting, because shouting oftentimes will distort a person's own voice and make it even more difficult, more challenging for the patient to hear. So uh, just with a, with a strong voice, try to speak in, in, in a loud voice, but not avoiding that yelling can certainly facilitate that communication. Uh, closing that gap between you and the patient so that you're, you're closer, that they can be able to uh, 
uh, observe uh, uh, lip reading as well um, because again they may be supplementing some of their their uh, perception of the language by some lip reading uh, and many of these patients may have visual impairment as well so simple things like just making sure that they have their glasses and and other assistive devices if they have a hearing aid that they um, have the opportunity to use that as well though all those things can really facilitate the communication and uh, it doesn't take much effort uh, it's just a few simple things to kind of keep in mind as you're approaching a patient particularly if you've noticed that they're struggling to be able to hear what you're saying tips for communicating don't assume hearing loss. Check for hearing aid placement and function. Face the patient to facilitate lip reading. Speak closer to the patient's preferred ear. And where appropriate, use gestures. Well, I think the older adult population, when they're having hearing loss, is just as frustrated that they can't hear you as you are, that, that you are not being heard by them. Um, so having patience um, and, and utilizing some of the tools that we'll talk about later may be, may be very helpful. Um, for that. So, so really just, just have some patience with it. Um, try some unique things to, to be able to communicate effectively with that, with that hearing impaired subject. After finishing this episode, you should appreciate the epidemiology of hearing loss, learn how to recognize hearing loss, and learn strategies to work with hearing loss in the field.